so I wanted to uh, finish what I started discussing a few days ago about the topic of happiness. Yeah, so I gave some preliminary comments. And uh, then after, I, I kept remembering more and more. <laughs> so here's what I think is the last uh, installment, but maybe not. OK, uh, so in terms of, of happiness, you know, what I talked about, the value of, of uh, you know, ethical conduct, the value of compassion, and, and so on and living according to our own values and principles. So another thing that I think is important in our lives for happiness is uh, to be able <clears throat> to forgive and to apologize. <coughs> so these two things go together, yeah? We forgive uh, people who have harmed us, uh, or they may not have harmed us, but we perceive harm. Yeah, because lots of times we perceive harm when nobody's harmed us at all. We've taken offense to some small thing, for example. Uh, and then, so that is forgiveness. Apologizing is when we don't feel good about something we've done and wanting want to make amends. So both of these are, are really essential, I think, to be happy because when we don't apologize, things weigh heavily on our own heart. You know, we don't feel good about what we've done. And we can justify, we can rationalize, we can explain and explain, but we're the one who lives with ourselves. And if we don't feel good about something, it means we need to, to clear it up somehow and apologize to whoever we offended. Um, sometimes we may not be able to contact that person, or that person may have died, or they may not you know, want to be in touch with us. Um, that doesn't matter. The important thing is that in our own heart, uh, we forgive ourselves. OK, so apologizing has to start with forgiving ourselves and recognizing Yes, I have afflictions, and sometimes I act according to my afflictions, and I don't feel good about myself after I do. And so I'm going to, uh, you know, be honest and straightforward about that with myself, and if it, you know, and with the other person or the other people, if possible, um, you know, to, to make amends and restore the relationship. So that's one element. The second element is to forgive. And so that involves uh, we have perceived harm, whether there's actually been harm or not. We have gotten stuck because we're angry. And it's the mentality of grievance, which is actually very uh, popular in America nowadays. Everybody has grievance. And this is, you know, the identity politics that has fostered this is I belong to this and such a group and you don't see me for who I am. You don't accept me for who I am. I'm being discriminated against. Uh, I'm, you know, it starts with Donnie and, you know, everything that uh, he's been indicted for is a hoax and it's unfair. And this is filtered down so that we all, you know, most people feel justified in being angry and, uh, you know, wanting to make their case heard and accusing other people of not uh, accepting them. Yeah. So this may be in terms of identity politics where we, the grudge is against other people or a group of people. It may also be in terms of personal relationships where, you know, maybe in a, a relationship breakup, you're angry because you feel you were deceived or the person weren't honest or they cheated on you, something like that. It may be at work where you feel somebody went behind your back and talked about you behind your back. It often, happens when we feel that uh, somebody mm, 
kind of accused us of something we didn't do and were upset about that. There's so many reasons, but the, the common denominator is uh, we're angry and we hold on to that anger as if it were saving our life. When in actual fact, that anger destroys our life. Yeah, because if we check up, uh, you know, are we happy when we're angry? When you hold a grudge, are you happy? No, no, everybody's miserable when they're angry. Yeah, and especially holding grudges. Yeah, it's like we, we, it just eats away because we feel that the, or we think that the other person is at fault and they should apologize. And I will only let go of my anger when they apologize to me. Yeah, because I'm right and they're wrong. And I wasn't being treated properly. Okay? So we hold on to this. The problem with wanting the other person to apologize before we release our anger is that we cannot control the other person. We cannot make them apologize. So we're giving away our power. Yeah, We are saying, I can't heal from this situation because I can't control the other person and make them apologize to me. Yeah. So we're giving away our power to heal when we think like that, yeah? Because our releasing our anger doesn't depend on the other person apologizing. I mean, it would, might be nice if they do, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, because I found that when I'm upset and holding on to, you know, a grievance, uh, when I look closely, I usually had uh, some misjudgment, some uh, false expectation, or I actually contributed to the situation in some way that I wasn't aware of or didn't want to acknowledge to myself. You know, for example, I may have mm, accidentally, deliberately, you, you know that? Yeah, accidentally, deliberately push somebody's button. Yeah, where, uh, you know that? Yeah, so you, you deliberately, but it's oh, really just an accident. Yeah, although you really meant it, but you're not going to own that you really meant it. You know, you said something to get at somebody, and it worked, and they're upset. And then you feel, why are they so upset? This is so unfair. I didn't do anything. Well, we did. Okay? So it's really important to acknowledge that and see our role in it. Yeah? Sometimes it wasn't accidentally, deliberately. Sometimes it was just plain old deliberately. Okay? Sometimes it was plain old accidentally, and we didn't see it. Okay, for example, when we had certain expectations, but we never checked out uh, with or checked with the other person to see if they agreed to um, our list of what we expected. You know, in other words, we didn't communicate very well. Yeah. Or maybe we saw some red flags, but we were so enthralled with the situation that we uh, poo-pooed the red flags. We overlooked things that were blaring red flags that we should have paid attention to. And then things, you know, happened with somebody. And we say, why, why how, how come they did this? But if we really check carefully before, there were red flags. And if we can acknowledge that we overlook the red flags, you know, or acknowledge that we had some role in it, I find for myself, personally speaking, that really helps me to release my anger. Yeah? 
when we can release our anger, yeah, when we can release that sense of grievance that somebody owes me something, then uh, our heart can be peaceful again. And if you remember when I first started talking about uh, happiness, two of the qualities that I mentioned of, of happiness uh, are a peaceful mind and a sense of purpose in our life. In other words, happiness is not this giddy, oh, I got what I wanted, this is so cool, you know, um, because that kind of, you know, thing doesn't last very long. Yeah, and it often crashes afterwards. Yeah, but a peaceful heart, a sense of purpose in our life, um, you know, really uh, bring bring a, a different kind of uh, happiness, a sense of fulfillment. And here's where the bodhicitta motivation comes in, because when we have a long term, uh, you know, purpose, I want to you know, benefit others most effectively. And to do that, I need to become a fully, a fully awakened Buddha myself. That's going to take a little bit of time, like a few eons. But I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. There's going to be bumps on the road. But the, the bumps are very small, considering the benefit of generating bodhicitta and going towards full awakening. Yeah, and so the bodhicitta gives us a lot of courage, uh, you know, so that when obstacles come, we can take them as part of the path, use them in the path to, uh, to generate the bodhisattva's qualities and create merit instead of wallowing in our usual pity parties. Okay, so really, if, if we spend time generating the four immeasurables, feeling equanimity, love, compassion, joy, f equally for all beings, and then on that basis, generating bodhicitta, then we're going to have purpose in our life, and that will make our mind a lot more peaceful than it is when we're grasping at transient, um, the transient, quote, quote, happiness of this life. Yeah. Okay.